So, all right, now we've got something a little bit special for you. Uh, we have a workshop uh, uh, Friday at 2 on, I think it's Friday at 2 at the Oscilloscope Music, and uh, Gerald Beam uh, Fenderson is here to actually give kind of a demo and intro, maybe hype a little bit of your interest into attending the event, and then you're performing tonight in the same yoga studio where you can't bring your own booze because there will be free booze there, so don't do it. Uh, but without, I guess, further ado, let's welcome him to the stage and listen to his wonderful demonstration. So, hello, and thanks for coming to my talk. I'm going to tell you a bit about my oscilloscope music project and how I started making it and how it works. Uh, so, you already know that this is more like a short introduction to the workshop later at the ma Maker stage at 2 p.m. Um, and I think... Before I tell you about how any of this works, it's probably best to show you an, an example of what it even is. So oscilloscope music is uh, basically music that is visualized on an analog oscilloscope. And here is the first track that I made with this technique. It's called Nuclear Black Noise. So I think this is enough to give you an idea uh, what this is like. So this video uh, was filmed from an analog oscilloscope and the signal that goes into it is the same signal that goes to the speakers. So one channel is used for the horizontal deflection and the other channel is used for vertical deflection on the oscilloscope. So I first used an oscilloscope uh, a long time ago when I did an apprenticeship as an electronic technician. Um, this is what the everyday life of an electronic technician looks like in this beautiful shutterstock image. Uh, so back then, all the analog oscilloscopes were being replaced by digital ones. But for teaching purposes, we still use the analog ones. And uh, I got really into the aesthetic of that green analog screen. So um, back then, I, I was already making music. And I played in bands, and we tried to visualize our music in several ways. So, uh, of course, I would try out to play music through an oscilloscope, but it didn't really look so good. And I will show you an example of what music usually looks like on an oscilloscope if it's not specifically made for it. So here's a song by the Beatles. It looks like this. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help. So it's basically just uh, squiggly something, random lines. Um, so I actually forgot about this for quite a long time. But then later I, uh, I started playing solo electronic music shows and I got interested in sound in a much lower level, like 
the structure of the waveforms and how they are made. And uh, yeah, I, I also studied audio engineering for a while, but never finished it. But uh, with by studying this, I learned a lot more about like uh, algorithmic composition and programming. So uh, in this time, I discovered this program called Pure Data. Maybe some of you already know it. It's a graphical audio programming environment. You have all these uh, all these objects that you just connect, and you can perform mathematical operations to create your own waveforms and combine them in some ways. So this patch that you can see here is actually the one that I made for Nuclear Black Noise, the track that you saw in the beginning. Um, it is an additive synthesis patch, and the, the way additive synthesis works is you only use sine waves and you add them up to, to create different sound spectra. And I have a video of that as well. So here you can see I use these sliders. Um, the, the base frequency is 100, at 100 hertz and then it's multiplied by one, by two, by three, by four, and so on. And I have all these sliders uh, to change the volume of each overtone. And the way this sounds is not audible. I'm not sure why. Oh, I think I know why. Yeah. And here you can see the waveforms adding up. It's all just side waves, but together they form uh, some different waveforms. And as soon as you have several of these tones, suddenly your perception of it is not the same anymore. You perceive it as one tone, not as several different tones. So when the frequency is changed, it sounds like it's just one tone that plays a melody with a different waveform. So then the next step is to use a sine wave on the horizontal channel and a cosine wave on the vertical channel. And together they would add up to a circle. So here's a slightly different patch that does the same thing for x, y on the oscilloscope. And you can see it's, it's circles being drawn at the same time at different speeds. So they create these spiral kind of shapes that you also saw in nuclear black noise. And now you can see it moving. That is when the frequency of one of the overtones is not, uh, uh, not a full number multiple of the bass frequency. So here it is 401 hertz now. So it, and I was changing some other frequencies as well, so the image started moving. And so I, I uploaded my first such video to YouTube in 2013, and, uh, and I started playing live shows with that as well. And in my live shows, I often used uh, a shape like a mushroom. I think it's this one. Yeah. And so a lot of people ask me how I make this mushroom. So I made a tutorial about that. Um, and the tutorial is also done completely on the oscilloscope. So uh, that video got rather popular on Reddit and so on. And I think it is a good explanation how these things work. Um, basically, the video, all it does is just explaining how the video was made. So I think it's a good idea to show you this one as well. Welcome, good people of the internet. Today I'm going to show you how to draw mushrooms on an oscilloscope with sound. We're gonna use our left audio channel for horizontal deflection. And our right audio channel for vertical deflection. Now first we need a sine wave on our horizontal deflection channel and a cosine wave on our vertical deflection channel. Together they add up to a beautiful circle. alter its size and shape by increasing or decreasing the volume of both channels. 
Now we add a sawtooth waveform to the right channel. Our circle or ellipse turns into a spiral. To get this spiral into the shape of a mushroom, we need to multiply our left channel with a sine wave of the same frequency as the sawtooth. But we're only gonna use the sine's last quarter. Of course we want our mushroom to move. Just like in real life. That's why we now add another sawtooth multiplied with a cosine wave of a slightly different frequency to our left channel. We can increase the number of mushrooms by dividing the cosine's frequency by 2 or even by 3 By randomly adding square waves we get even more mushrooms In fact we can plant an entire field move into space. But no matter how far you go, always remember to let there be love. Yeah. So <laughs> So you could see that the images went a bit beyond what was actually explained, like with the 3D graphics. Um, and, but I'm going to show you a bit about the 3D graphics. So here is a, oh, here is a patch that does something like this in pure data. I'm just going to <laughs> So here you can see it drawing this uh, mushroom landscape with a grid and a butterfly. And what it actually does, uh, w what I do to draw 3D images is this. I draw all these, all these things with three coordinates, X, Y, and Z coordinates. And then I just uh, feed them into basically an uh, audio rendering engine, which works very simply. Uh, I, I just make everything that is further away like that has a high z-coordinate smaller than the other things and then two channels come out that I can feed into the oscilloscope the same way as before. So that's basically how it would also work for any 3D graphics that are shown on a two-dimensional monitor. So, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, I, I made an album with this in 2016 uh, with 10 tracks of this kind of music and I teamed up with a friend named Hansi uh, who helped me a lot on the software part of all of this and he made a program called Osti Studio which takes away a lot of of the work that you have that you would have to do over and over again like for example the 3D rendering thing and this is Osti Studio here you can for example just select one of the presets like the cube put some perspective on it and uh, then let it rotate. And then with this program you also have, for example, the ability to use this trace plugin. This lets you draw just a part of this line and you can hear the overtones changing or 
it gets more overtones the, the more of the image you draw. So this makes pretty cool sounds and when it rotates uh, you have a constant variation of the sound. So I use effects like this a lot in the music that I make. Now another cool thing that this program can do is it can connect to Blender. So many of you probably know Blender. And uh, here I can just Yeah, now I, I sent this shape over to OC Studio, and now I have this cylinder here. So basically, this program converts 3D images into sound. And one thing that is pretty important uh, when doing so is um, if you have jumps in the waveform, like if it jumps from here to there, then you suddenly get a lot of harsh and very loud sounds. So uh, the thing that is important is, as you can see when I uh, when I just draw a part of it, that it always has to be one connected line. So you can see it's it's drawing up and down all of these lines here. And uh, with basically the same technique, um, I did one of my tracks, or actually several of my tracks on the album, but here's an animation that I made in Blender with these robot arms that assemble something and you can also send, the, send a complete animation over to OSC Studio. Um, however, I'm not going to do this now because it takes some time until it's all there, but I can show you a clip uh, of how I used it. Yeah, so this is a this is a track that, and then there comes a bicycle, and the bicycle rides through a mountain landscape, and so on. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, you can try out all of these things. I made a lot of patches in Pure Data and Max MSP. Um, Oh yeah, one, one thing that I also wanted to say is in the new version of Aussie Studio, which is not out yet, but will come out very soon. It's been coming out very soon for about a year now. Um, there is this live coding feature where you can just write code directly in C++, so it makes it very efficient to just uh, do to some kinds of operations here. For example, if I uh, try something, See if it does anything. Yeah, now I replace the X coordinate with a sign. And uh, this makes it very powerful and uh, very efficient to work with sound. So actually, this opens it up for audio programming of all kinds, not just for oscilloscope music. So, yeah, anyway, you can try out all these things that Hansi and I made there uh, over in the maker stage from 2 p.m. And I think if you have questions, it's probably best if you just come over there and ask there. Unless you have some very pressing questions, then the time is now. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of the software that you're It's OSCI Studio. O-S-C-I Studio. Yeah. So, thank you. question for the audience, actually. So who here is going to be anywhere near Seattle this coming Wednesday? A few people? OK. So, um, so uh, Jeremy Fenderson is going to be doing um, So he's going to be doing a show in the uh, Laser Dome 
at Pacific Science Center on Wednesday night for, I guess, the first time ever with the laser. Yeah, that's right. So basically driving uh, the laser galvos directly with the sound um, audio signal. So if you happen to be around on Wednesday night, um, there are tickets available. Uh, I think we sent out some links. If you go to adasbooks.com, it's on the events page. It's being produced by Ada's Books. So come check it out. Sorry, what's that? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Cool. All right, thanks.